Let's do it. Perfect. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are here playing Stardew Valley. I am joined tonight with Dr. Rachel Cohort, who bravely said that she had introduced herself. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> I said the name. <laughs> Hi, the name of your farm. Um, <laughs> oh um, I am Dr. Rachel Cohort. I am the research director of Take This, which is the first mental health nonprofit organization uh, to form specifically to work within the gaming community and the gaming industry. I'm a research psychologist. I have known Ashley for a bajillion years, and I'm excited to be here. Yay! And you just had a book come out, right? I did. So in January, I published a new book. It's Video Games and Wellbeing. And it is the first book to ever be published that focuses specifically on the positive impact of digital games and mental health being one of them. So in honor of that, we're going to explore Bart's farm, <laughs> not a drug farm, <laughs> Ashley. Sorry. Okay, so I started. Okay, so first of all, chat, I should probably be doing an audio visual check just to make sure everything's good. But um, as per usual, if you're if you're not a regular here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are a regular, you will know that I do not think it's rude at all if you let me know if there's an audio or visual quality drop. I actually really appreciate that um, because depending on how my setup is, sometimes I can't tell if there's something wrong. So let me check real quick. Okay. Oh, sorry about the echo. It's because I'm checking on my phone. Um, <clears throat> perfect. So hopefully you can also hear the game audio. When I just checked on my phone, I couldn't hear a game audio. But can you hear it, Rachel? Um, I can hear the game audio. I'm trying to center myself. Or are you all messed up? That's all right. I'm not messed up. I'm just not centered. I'm going to. Okay. Cool. And you can hear us. Well, I mean, I, I heard can. me. <laughs> can you hear yourself? Uh, no, I can't hear my, there's no echo. Oh, audio is good, says the chat. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I started this game, so Stardew Valley, we'll start off talking about the game. I started this game when my grandmother came to visit. Um, and I thought it would be a cool, like Mario Kart kind of freaked her out because it was a little too speedy speedy for her. So um, I, I decided to, to go for something like slow pace because Animal Crossing wasn't out yet. And uh, I asked her what I should name my farm and I broke drugs and she was like, no, it's not a drug farm. And I'm like, okay. So then my, my farm is called not a drug farm. Um, and then she, she didn't tell me what to name my character. So I named my character Fart for some good good toilet humor so I apologize I played three minutes of this game so <laughs> so get excited I guess is what I'm saying get excited Oof. they want to bring so tell me why you like this game so whenever I have a guest on my stream I let them pick the game um and Rachel picked this one Dad, I love this game so much so <clears throat> this game was out for a while before um I found it and I was talking to a friend of mine and they said it was a better version of Harvest Moon. Do you remember oh, Harvest Moon? Yeah. No, I played a lot of that game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, me too. And so I said, them are fighting words. Don't be talking about Harvest Moon. Uh, but they were totally right. It is absolutely a better version of Harvest Moon. Um, I love this game for a lot of reasons. You know, it's got good mental health representation. It is... How's that? <laughs> Am I, are you laughing? You're laughing at me. Why are you laughing? I'm at laughing me? at your character. She's. Funny um, oh, She's so very I think that's a health representation because of the villagers in the game. So you've only played for three minutes. So you haven't talked to them yet. Um, but they all have really elaborate backstories. Um, they all have really accurate backstories. So there's one character who has depression, um, and oh. the way that they represent it is not in like a a stereotyped like pigeonhole type of way it's really about like hitting your rock bottom and then seeking help he goes um he ends up going to a therapist and, and seeking help and and getting better if you play his storyline all the way through um there's another character who has ptsd that's represented relatively accurately um so that's all like wonderful to see and you don't see very often in video games now really, i feel like, i feel a like a bit of a shit for naming my character Fart. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's fine. There's some lighthearted parts. There's a wizard. All right. We can talk to the other cool stuff about this game. The only bad thing about the wizard is you can't marry him. I thought that was very good. <laughs> uh, but you can marry anyone you want, girls or boys, which is nice. Yay! Um, and it's just, 
chill. Like you, you're doing your farm. There's like a mine. You can go and fight some like slimes. In the mine. You can go fishing. Hey, am I farming wrong? What should I be doing? Should I be planning? You're farming stuff? wrong. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, clearing your land is step one, so that's great. You don't really need to be digging holes yet. Unless you have seeds. Uh, I got parsnip seeds. Parsnip yeah, yeah. seeds. You should be clearing up your brush, and then there's like an energy bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm blocking so it. Yeah. Yeah. There. Okay. So you don't want to use all your energy because then you'll have to go to sleep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what should I be doing? Should I be going and finding villagers? Yeah, go find some villagers. Well, I, I mean, gotta. That would be this. more exciting for your stream, I think, if you were finding villagers. Okay. You mean people so the don't thing like is, just... there's, <laughs> so there's lots of cool villagers, but there's one. The one who's depressed, his name is Shane. And he is such a jerk and I remember when I played this game you talk about feeling bad I felt so bad I was talking to my friends and I was like this guy is Shane is the worst like who would talk to him who would court him he always tells you like go away don't talk to me and he's the one with this like beautiful hopeful storyline about depression and I was like oh now I'm the jerk like I should have like tried harder to be nice to him <laughs> um, uh I'm Okay, I'm just walking along. I presume I'm running. You're going something. the long way. Okay. Out of your farm. But that's okay. Wait, how do I leave? <laughs> okay, go back to your farm and then just go to the right. <laughs> you didn't have to go like all through. Yeah. Oh, like up here though. Yeah, like by your house. God Almighty, so many weeds. You know, that's why I titled it "Not a Drug Farm." Okay, so uh, let's talk about, so you wrote a book on uh, mental health and video games in a positive way. Yeah. Um, so what, like, let's talk about that. So this game, if you want to be particular to the, this game, that would be great. If you want to, is this my house? Yeah, this house. I'll go to the right. I'll go to the right and just follow the road. There you go. No, don't go uh, in your house. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so how, it's an edited how, book. Other than like the representation of um, yeah. mental health, how how would this game be good for mental health? Um, keep going to the right. Don't go there. That's the bus stop. You're not yeah, but I want to get that. Oh, okay. You can get that up. Daffodil and a leak. Hell yeah. Um, I forgot the question. I'm so distracted. You know why? Your character reminds me of the uh, scientist in Maniac Mansion. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. I was thinking like an alien Smurf with puke hair. <laughs> Yeah, so like the, the scientist in Maniac Mansion. Yeah. Like, yeah. Except she's blue and I guess he was green. Um, well, Stardew Valley is actually a game I'm talking about a lot lately, similar to Animal Crossing. In terms of games that are like repetitive and relaxing and like easy to just pick up and put down, you don't really have to have a lot of like skills to master or figure out what's going on. Uh, Stardew Valley is great for that. So in these times of extremely high anxiety, and stress, um, Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, those are the kinds of games that people are turning to for like stress reduction and relaxation. So why does it reduce our stress? Why does the repetition? And also, how am I exhausted? It's 1 p.m. Because you picked all those weeds, go down. You're still in like the park. If you wanna find the people, you gotta go down. Get your stuff. No. Um, why do we find that rep repetition uh, soothing? Because it's easy. And it is, I like to talk about it in terms of motivations, right? It really tackles into, oh, there's Harvey. Harvey's the one that married, he's the doctor. Um, <laughs> he's the doctor and he likes wine and cheese because they all like different gifts. And I was like, what's not to like about that? Um, <laughs> the repetition, it's easy, it's calming. It taps into these ideas of like playing games or escapism, which isn't inherently a bad thing. And a lot of times people think, oh, you're playing to escape, that's a bad thing. But it's, it's really not. Uh, it's just about getting a break from the everyday, the groundhog days that are our lives these days, it seems. Um, so it's good for that, just because it's calm and easy. It's also games like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, they're kind of life simulators, right? You're simulating going out, meeting people, going to work, making money. And it gives you a sense of kind of control over the situation when we currently have less control um, than we're used to. Would you say that the Sims are similar? Yes, mm -hmm. I would. And I love the Sims. I haven't played the Sims in a long time. Man, um, they are, there's so many expansions now. It's fire. There's you know, like a Harry Potter one. There's what? a doggy one. 
there's a vacation one. Um, there's a, even like a Twitch celebrity one. That's pretty No, good. there's not. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's I'm cool. trying to make the most obnoxious uh, streamer possible. So I have like a side side gig in The Sims. I haven't played in a few weeks, but. That's awesome. <gasps> Report card. Spelling D. Vincent. Where's this kid? So is it like, oh, you're not good enough friends with Sam to enter his bedroom. But I can just like walk into his house though. That's cool. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. I'll just, I'll just go to bed, I guess. <laughs> um, so uh, people find a soothing. It's a life simulator. Uh, probably there's something there about building efficacy and being able to do things that you can't do in real life. Oh, <gasps> cows! There's also, Sorry. I like to get on a soapbox a bit about like parasocial relationships and the relationships you form with the characters. Uh, it's true of Animal Crossing again as well. So it's not just about like, it was all about games being social and playing with other people you know, which is great and obviously has its benefits. But when you have games like this and like Animal Crossing, you can form relationships with the characters in the game, right? You, you talk to them, they respond to you. And even though they're not real people and they're NPCs, the emotions associated with the relationships are very similar. So there's this really good study from a couple years ago from uh, Emery Daniel and uh, David Westerman. And they looked at tweet content after Jon Snow, sorry, spoiler, after Jon Snow was killed in Game of Thrones. Um, and the sentiments they were, people were expressing in their tweets after Jon Snow died were not significantly different from the sentiments people expressed when like people they actually know died. So it's like, even though Jon Snow oh, is a wow. fictional character, the yeah. emotions are the same. Yeah. And the same can be said of like the relationships we form with like the, our neighbors in Animal Crossing. Like we feel that sense of camaraderie. We feel that sense of encouragement or not being alone, just the sense of social presence. And those emotions are very real. Oh, I straight yeah. down. I hate all my villagers. You do? What? Well, you have Satan in your village, I saw. I, mean, <laughs> I feel like that's, he's not going to be a good neighbor. He's the only one I like. He's actually pretty chill. So, <laughs> who do, do you I have as your neighbors? Well, I have a hippo, a red hippo that's kind of grown on me, okay. um, who was playing some form of tag in the town square with Satan for like solid two and a half hours. And then oh, uh, the red hippo had a birthday party and Satan was the only one that showed up. Um, oh, and, for their friend. Yeah, and now I'm like shipping them hard. So, ah, squirrel. Oh. Okay, but how do I go home though? Because I'm gonna die. Right? You, no, you're you. Have, yeah, you're gonna pass out. You gotta go to the left. No, go back the way you went. Oh goodness. Okay, but that squirrel's talking to me. <laughs> well, you can I don't like the look of that squirrel. Leak. You can pick up that leak. Go back. Oh, my inventory's full. Is that a good name? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go down. Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Well, I'm gonna go get. The... Well, you said your inventory was full. How are you? Gonna yeah. Can you? Can you? They don't stack. I don't know. Oh. Oh. It's been a long time since no. I played this game. Boo. Boo. Okay, so uh, I have some questions for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, what are your questions? Well, first of all, where's my house? <laughs> Let's down, stay with that down, one for a minute. Down. And then it's going to be to the right because that left is like the expansion. Go God the almighty. Right. right. Like down though? No. no, no, it's not even down. Oh. <laughs> it's just like directly to the right. right. Here we go. Oh, good. Phew. Okay. I thought for sure I was a goner. Okay, good. That's squirrel. No, now you gotta go sleep. And then. Awfully yeah. hungry. How do I unload? Do I have a. I think you have a box in there, do you? No, not yet. Well. You're gonna have to craft it. So that's, you know, there's crafting involved. And the game like this, there's obviously some kind of crafting. What's you do get a pet, just though. staying in bed. Oh, can you choose what kind of pet it is? You can choose between cat and dog. Ah, nice. Okay, so, uh, wait, I can craft by pushing X, it seems like. Wood fence, gate, chest. I need 50 wood. Okay, that's a lot, though. Okay. Well, I guess I'm chopping wood today. Yeah, you might want to plant your seeds, too. Now that you're like refreshed of energy, you already okay. dug the hole for that. How do I do that? 
can just drop them in the where you already like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. filled the ground, and then but you gotta water it too, and you gotta fill the watering can up at your, at your oh, water. God source. almighty, this is like Harvest Moon. Okay, it's exactly like Harvest Moon. <laughs> Do I have to eat? I don't think you have to. I think it gives you energy. So like okay. eventually you get like a sword, and you get to go in the mine, and it's awesome, and you need to like go down multiple levels and if you don't have food or a potion or whatever like you'll just pass out in the mine like I did for days <laughs> and, then, and then realize you should have brought a snack <laughs> that's uh most road trips um so while I'm doing this labor let's uh how <laughs> did I just water the pond yeah I think I just watered the pond okay but I think can we filled okay all right focus all right so uh one of the things that I think um I think I think people are not expecting to be experiencing. I don't want to call it trauma, but like a, mm, I guess unwellness, mental unwellness. I think yeah. some people are are expecting to experience that during quarantine, but I think other people are genuinely shocked that they're experiencing what I think is grief. Right. So I have yeah. a few friends that are yeah. like, oh, I feel really selfish and stupid for feeling bad. Like, I'm feeling really upset right now about not being able to go on holiday. And it's like, oh, wah, you can. And, and it's like, no, right. you need to let yourself grieve like that. That yeah. is a loss. Obviously, it's not the same as losing a human, but I don't think they're saying that it is. Right. I think it's, you right. know, so I think. <sighs> cool. Thanks. Thanks, game. Um, so I think that uh, people are experiencing a lot of mental health unwellness. I won't say illness because I think that's something different. Um, right. But what, what should people, I guess, be looking out for? What What's a normal, I feel bad right now? Because I think a lot of people are feeling bad. Um, yeah. So what's a normal, I feel bad versus uh, I should get help feel bad? And also, I feel like, I don't know this for a fact. Well, I kind of do because I couldn't get in to see my therapist for a month and a half. So I think that uh, mental health care providers are kind of overwhelmed right now and probably trying to stay healthy and, and they're getting a lot of... Uh, clients coming in so um i guess what what when if there are people that are hesitating calling someone because they feel like everyone's yeah. booked up when would it be like oh this is this is severe yeah i mean if if you are feeling that maybe you want to talk to somebody um i would say don't hesitate i am friends with a lot of clinicians and they've all exclusively shifted to telehealth oh cool um so they are available and able to just beam right into you. Um, they have HIPAA approved like software and it's all very, oh, rad. yeah, protected. You know, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so it's hard to say what the line, if the line is different for everyone. I mean, for me, I mean, I, I would say, you know, my mental health journey, it, it oscillates and some days I'm like, oh, I feel bad. And some days I'm like, I feel like really bad. And on those days, those are the days that you call someone. Um, yeah. But it's gonna be different for everyone. Just, you can have a consultation. You don't have to commit to anything. If you just feel like you wanna to talk to them, there's lots of hotlines. Um, it's just good to talk to somebody because these times are tough, man. They're tough on everyone. Um, I have generally high anxiety, which is now even higher, <laughs> understandably. Not so much with the social isolation. I tend to be more introverted, but it's like, the constant barrage of bad news, just the general yeah. restriction on my movement. Like, okay, I generally tend to be introverted, but now I have like fear of going to the grocery store and it's like a constant fear. I have fear for the health of my mom who has, you know, pre-existing issues. So I think that everyone is feeling a heightened level of bad. Um, and it wouldn't hurt us all to talk to somebody. For sure. Sure, generally sure. in life I always like to say like even when you're doing good you can always benefit from having a therapist yeah um, so yeah it's hard how so are you doing we, we, quarantine? <laughs> I've been quarantined for four weeks so this is like mm -hmm. my new normal um one of the things that I noticed okay so do I okay side note do, do I have to just straight up throw away these this this what? this like can, can I, I can't exit this menu because I'm guessing I'm out of inventory space, you have a chest yeah, why oh. can't I? How do you place it? Yeah, I think you can get things out of the trash once you throw them away. Don't okay. Well, out. let's. The fiber doesn't do you any good anyway. Just throw that away. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, how do I put the chest down? Oh, probably by selecting it and then ah, score. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, let's dump some crap in here. Yeah. Um. 
Let's, how do you do that? Nope. <laughs> Not your tools. Almighty. There we go. Okay, Not there the we seat. go. Yeah. Oh, okay, I figured it out. Good. We're, we're back in business. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I notice myself kind of going through and something that I talk to my students about is uh, the Kubler-Ross. And maybe, maybe you could... Is if that's totally disqualified and just no one, no one it's listens not, to it anymore. It's not. Oh, right. good, it's, good, 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 good. Because yeah. I haven't caught it. Like totally that's something thing. I learned in undergrad, and I wasn't sure. If it's totally still... a thing. Yes. Okay, good. Um, the stages of grief are something that I've kind of personally been feeling like, and I've noticed that other people are, are but they're everyone's at a different stage in grief. So, uh, right. having been looking at the news since January because of Global Game Jam, um, yeah. I thought, oh crap, here comes a pandemic, and then I was maybe a little bit more prepared. So I feel like I've come to right. the acceptance stage <laughs> of, of right. grief, but I feel like other folks around me are still in, like the anger phase, or you know, so. Denial. Things. Yeah, like, yeah. A lot of people feel it. Yeah. So, have you noticed that too? Do you think that's legit? Absolutely. Um, I will say, I was talking to somebody. I, what I was talking to somebody yesterday. I do not live in the states anymore. I live in Canada. So I was talking to somebody in the states, um, and I said, "Oh man, it looks like the conservative prediction." So this was yesterday before the announcement was made that a hundred thousand people might die. And the person I was talking to was like, "No, that's ridiculous." And I was like, "Is it though?" Because doesn't actually seem like that big of a percentage compared to how many people um, right. live and they were like oh well you know most people are quarantining i don't actually think most people are following the rules but yeah. most people are following the rules it's going to be fine and i was like well if you think about it like that's such a small percentage and they were like oh i guess you're right and then today was the announcement that it's predicted between 100 and 250,000 people are going to die in the united states um which where did that announcement come from i haven't i haven't heard that one. Oh, it was but i haven't been checking the it news was a presidential too. briefing Oh, joy. <laughs> I know. So, exactly. And also, it, like, makes it more of a real... Like, I was talking about it yesterday, but to, like, hear it actually be announced, it's like, that is so many people, and that is so freaking terrible, and it's all going south, and... Um, so, yeah, so the person I was talking to yesterday, definitely in denial. Maybe a bit more in anger now. Maybe they're progressing through the stages. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, I think people are in all the different stages. I think I was in acceptance and I reverted a little back to depression today when I found out school was going to continue to be closed, <laughs> which I have to be honest, on like a con on an intellectual level, I, I genuinely don't think schools will open until next year. Right. But to hear it be actually announced, it was like, oh. I have two small children at home and I work and my husband works, so it's been interesting. But um, yeah. It is grief. I think that's the perfect way of conceptualizing it. It's so, a loss of so many things. Right. And if, if our audience doesn't know, the five stages of um, uh, grief, and, and one of the really cool things about this is, I think Kubler-Ross, they were anthropologists and looking at um, death and dying and funerals, right? But I think uh, since then, psychologists and anthropologists have taken and expanded on it to include like all sorts of stuff. So when if you have a relationship breakup, you could still go through the, the phases of grief. So they are... Um, if I remember off the top of my head, let's see if I do. Uh, is the first one denial? It is. And the second one is anger? It is. And the third one is, uh, oh crap. Hit me That's with that. Bargaining. Bargaining, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, so did you go through bargaining in for, for the pandemic? <laughs> I mean, me personally, um, I, I don't, I'm more of a realist, honestly. Yeah. I so, was more like, this is coming, this is bad, don't touch anyone, go inside. I was telling Ashley earlier that some of the people that live around me, I still see them playing outside, and I'm like, what are you doing? Um, yeah, so, so yeah. bargaining is typically where you're like, I'll do anything to bring this person back, or, or if it's a relationship, then I can change, I can change, we'll make this work, uh, let's go to counseling, whatever, you know. And really, at that point, the relationship has already died, and you're just bargaining. So I think a lot of folks yeah. are trying to um, maybe bargain with the uh, presence of medical equipment. Like, if I wear a mask and gloves, then I can still go outside and everything will be all right. Right, it won't be. <laughs> I mean, it might be. But don't go outside. Just stay inside. This is very validating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, that, they're saying to stay inside. You know, it's a very communicable d virus that is terrible and, and seems to do terrible things. I'm sorry, this is such a downer string. Let's, let's just enjoy Stardew Valley. It's so lovely. Um, yeah. So after bargaining, there's a depression. Depression and then acceptance is the last stage. I think a lot of us are in depression. And acceptance, I think a lot of acceptance usually comes like significantly after the fact. And I don't even think we've hit the peak of how bad it is. Um, honestly, so yeah. yeah, it's not. It's pretty. It's a pretty terrible and terrifying time, I have to say. Yeah, it just is. Which yeah. is why games like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing make such a wonderful escape because we all need a little bit of escape. Like even for people like myself, I never watch the news. I did. I for years have been on the soapbox that the news just makes my life worse because it's always terrible information and it and it generally doesn't affect me directly. And if it's super important, it'll trickle down. Um, but this, you know, coronavirus, I find myself checking the news all the time. I think just to, thinking information will lower my anxiety. I'm not sure, but it's just yeah. terrible. Yeah, no, I, I definitely um, experienced something similar. I'm, like, addicted to the news now where right. I feel like I check it every morning, every night. But I'm specifically yeah. checking the numbers and charts because yeah. – um, when I personally need to process things, I, I have this this need for information. Um, right. And I think that th that's pretty common, right? Like when people experience yeah. stress and anxiety, some people seek to control the environment and try and control every single variable and other people, you know, go off the rails and drink a lot and do, do all these other um, kind of behaviors. And so for me, I, I'm definitely one of those control people. Hey, Pepperoni, how is Gabe's stream going? Uh, farm life is great. This is not a drug farm, and my character's name is Fart, so <laughs> everything's going about as well as can be expected. So that uh, brings us to let's let's have a lighter note yeah. <laughs> since we've been such downers. I know, sorry, <laughs> it's it's you know it's the times though. It's it's hard. It's hard not to talk about it because it's affecting everybody, right? Right, and I find it very cathartic to talk about it, and I think a lot of people are the opposite, and they're getting annoyed with me for talking about it so much. Okay, but... <laughs> let's talk about farm life. Um, you haven't well, met any people on, on your village yet. Well, because I, mean, I got stuff to do. I can't. How am I going to bring go home a those, cow? There's, you know, there's going to be a dance soon, and no one's going to dance with you because you're going to have no heart. So that's what happens to me, and it was so bad. Um, Also, I probably haven't showered, so... <laughs> Been well, you don't have a shower on your farm. Farming so pretty good. hard, so I guess no one's going to dance with me. Problem. Um, but let's talk about c cabin fever. So uh, that's one of the things I want to talk about because I think it's one of those like pop psychology terms that is actually really, really real. <laughs> so what would you call, what's the more fancy name for cabin fever and what? how do you cope with that? Uh, cabin fever generally talks about being restless. Right, if you're if you're confined to a space and it is making you feel isolated and restless, um, I think that some people. I have a very good friend named Christina who I love dearly. Hi, Christina, if you're watching. Um, who likes to? Who needs to go out? Like she just needs to. Like she can't be in the house. She wants to go even to like the park or Walgreens or Target or whatever it is. Like she always needs to go out and be somewhere. So for her, I know this is super hard, and I talk to her almost daily, and she's just like, I can't stay in the house. Like, it's just so hard for me. Um, for other people, they're perfectly fine. Like, my husband, perfectly fine not leaving the house. Um, but this day and age, we're so lucky that we have Twitch. Twitch, first of all, is a great platform because we feel like we are engaging, and we feel like we are. We're engaging in social interaction with another person. It's two-way interaction. It's like a window outside of our house. Um, and we have these kinds of things, whereas before, we did not. Um, so I think in terms of the era at which we are now being physically distanced from other people, uh, we have so many tools around us to help mitigate you know, these feelings of isolation and restlessness, like streaming and like playing games online and Skype and FaceTime and just a telephone and, you know, Netflix, all these things. Popper dog. Okay, how do I get people gifts, though? Um, how do you I just give like it me? to them. Um, like, you just, like, yeah, like, hold it in your hand and give it to them, I think. But every, different people like different things. So you have to buy them, presumably, right? No, you can give them stuff that you grow off your farm. Or you can give them, like, the leeks. I don't know. If they don't like the present, they'll be like, thanks a lot. Like, they, they, 
Can I, um, like, yeah. steal stuff? Um, you like, can go through someone's garbage, I think. I think you can go through garbage. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really remember. Done. I firmly really believe internet interaction counts as socialization. We need to update our psychology and sociology models to reflect that. Yes, pepperoni. Um, pepperoni. I've been talking about that a lot, actually. About um, mediated socialization is kind of my soapbox. Um, I've been talking about it since I met Ashley back in the day. Yeah. Um, and it absolutely counts. So research has found that friends you make online, even friends that you don't know in person. So I know Ashley in person, but um, like you, Pepperoni, me interacting with you has very similar social benefits to me interacting with you know somebody next to me in my house. And models are shifting and changing. Um, change is slow, of course. Um, I can link, there was a, I just talked about this the other day in relationship to uh, Animal Crossing. But yes, online friendships, I wanna say online friendships are real friendships. Not oh, everyone sure. you know on the internet is your friend, but if they, if, if they are your friend, they're friendship. You know, one of the sweetest things ever when I was playing WoW Classic, one of my guildmates made a model of my night elf warrior and had it sent to me for Christmas. And that's honestly one of the best presents I've ever gotten. That in is my so life. sweet. Right? Yeah. <sighs> and then like, I still text them too. I stopped playing WoW Classic because, uh, well, Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you still playing WoW? Uh, and I quit in right around Christmas time, I think. Oh, wow. wow Classic? Did you not play Wow Classic? I know. I haven't played Wow since I was doing my masters. Oh, I Wow Classic know. was great. Wow Classic was good and bad. So the good parts of it was like remembering how things were and then like connecting with a group of people that it felt like um, running into someone in Stormwind was just running into a friend and like everyone yeah. was older. Awesome. People were like, hey, did they find Saddam yet? And like making all sorts of- Oh, that's funny. <laughs> like yeah. time, time traveling references. Um, but then then it was kind of sadder. Like I was talking to one of the, the mages in, in my guild and he was like, yeah, the last time I played, my wife was still alive and, and it got really sad. And I was like, oh, that time, you know, it's kind of like a time capsule, right? When you it pull is. up in a time capsule, you get the good and the bad. It is. That's so what's Pepperoni true. saying? One of the aspects of my social, sociology and medicine senior paper was how the internet improved the quality of life of our aging population. Oh, for sure. One of um, my students actually said that the, the I've been trying to do some like gentle, light mindfulness with the students of like think of one positive thing that's happened this week, um, either because of the pandemic or in spite of the pandemic. And one of my students said that they were able to reach out to their grandparents a lot more than they would have because they're they're mm. they're nervous about their health, which is not yeah, great. Of course. But being uh, reaching out more and having a better relationship with their grandparents is uh, really nice. That's nice. Got my streaming laptop set up. Woohoo! That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like there's cool. a lot more. You know, the isolation that has led to more streamers and more. I've definitely been able to watch more streams than I've normally uh, been. I'm playing way more video games than I have been. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's just because Animal Crossing has touched my soul or if it's like the need for that like outlet now more than ever. Um, but there are definitely some positives we can say about the last two weeks. Yeah, so on, on that note, um, uh, what, how can games help during the quarantine Maybe in conjunction with that cabin fever idea, or just yeah. uh, in general. Games generally uh, have been shown to be great stress reducers. Uh, so good games, you know this. You teach games, saying good games um, give you a sense of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Right. So they give you a sense of being um, independent, free to make your own choices. They give you a sense of achieving something, and they give you a, some kind of sense of relatedness, whether it's relating with the other players or relating with the players of the game, whatever it might be, the companion cute, get the drift. Um, <laughs> so, and those three are basic psychological needs. So getting those three things met already is generally a pleasurable feeling. So when our day-to-day -day lives are becoming less pleasurable, being able to pick up something that's quick, easy, accessible, games on your phone, games on the Switch, whatever it might be, uh, is a great tool to have to relieve your stress, to take a break from the day-to-day, -to, -day, to connect with your friends. I mean, 
people are throwing weddings in Animal Crossing and graduations in Minecraft, and they're using technology in all these beautiful ways to stay connected. Um, and I strongly encourage you to do the same. And have you seen the W the news from the WHO this week? I thought that was uh, poor reporting. I didn't think the WHO said to do that. They did. Okay. Which is the weirdest thing I've ever read, honestly. Why is beer the, so expensive? Well, maybe if you, you know, do you have to make it yourself? Some gifts, gave some gifts to the barmaid. Oh, it might be cheaper. I think you can brew your own beer at some point. I know you can make your own wine at some point. Oh, so I gotta get in good with Gus, huh? You're, You're right, Gus. With I Abigail, do. I think Abigail works. Okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> yes, back on to, oh, an arcade. Let's play a video game in a video game. You can. They're hard, man. What? I only played it once, and I was like, this is too hard. It's probably going to be easy now. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. How do you aim? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yep. Welcome. Okay, it's not just me. Run! Okay, it's not just me. You're over. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the controls seem less than ideal. Okay, so it's the right stick that I have to aim, but also, okay. Well, but you can't aim up. Oh, no, you can't. Wait, why am I up. chatting? I'm like, who am I going to chat to on this? Okay, so running seems like a, a you go. medium you strategy. Go. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, games are getting quarantined. <laughs> Crap. Uh, I didn't Games know people were... quarantine. So the WHO, they said that we should all play video games. <laughs> yeah, Ella's like, they said to do what? Yeah, sorry, I cut you off. Oh, yeah, was... sorry. Yeah. So the WHO, as many of you or some of you might be familiar... They let the dogs um, out. They let the dogs out. That was the first thing they did. The second thing they did um, is they made an announcement saying that gaming disorder was going to be included in their next diagnostic manual. This was a couple years ago, um, which was met with a lot of mixed feelings from the research community, mostly because we do not feel, I want to speak for everyone, the majority of researchers in the field do not believe there's enough evidence to suggest that gaming disorder is unique enough to be its own diagnosable uh, condition. So there's nothing to show that there is something exclusive about games versus any other kind of media that makes them addictive in and of themselves. In fact, research tends to suggest that it, it's more of a coping strategy for something underlying. So the primary right. diagnosis would be like depression or anxiety or environmental stress or whatever. Yeah, so when they, uh, a couple of years ago, Fortnite was blamed for 200 divorces in the United Kingdom. And the first thing that came to my mind is I don't think Fortnite's really the problem, right? If you're choosing yeah. to play a game instead of spending time with your spouse, there's exactly. probably something else going on. Exactly, it's not unique to Fortnite. Um, but now the WHO the other day made a statement that said, playing video games is a great way to connect with people during the quarantine. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I mean, yes, I agree. I mean, are you going to change your tune about, you know, gaming disorder? I don't know. Um, but Pam is yes. holding me hostage. <laughs> oh, okay, good. She, she let me go. She, did she? Uh, okay, yeah, cause... finally. Oof, that was scary. Yeah, There's she Shane. Pepperoni. Oh, where? Shane. Where? Oh, where? Where? The brown hair. That's Shane? On the bench? No, not on the bench. She's got oh. red hair. No, go north. Uh, I'm gonna be eaten by a group. Oh! Oh, he got long hair. Oh, that's Elliot. Sorry, oh, I yeah, got distracted. Elliot. Oh, Elliot's so <laughs> Game wild. over. Uh, Elliot is mine. Oh, there's Shane behind him in the blue shirt. That's great. Oh. But anyway, you'll see that Shane is very standoffish. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Well, that's because this is this is now the Elliot show. Yeah, Elliot's like, I live by the, you know, Elliot's funny. He's like the literature writer or something. There, Shane. See, what do you want? Leave me alone. I was like, this guy's such a jerk. Hey, give me your number, Elliot. Come here. Come here, Elliot. <laughs> you gotta give him a present. Oh, what does he want? I don't even remember. I, I don't, don't, it would take a lot of convincing if I were him to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he hasn't asked you your name yet. You still have time to change it. Oh, oh, do I? Okay, no. that'd be good. You don't, so when you introduce yourself, that might be the, the breaking point. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna politely 
<laughs> follow him around. Okay. Um, <laughs> there is a character oh. who plays D and D. Oh, that's so sweet. Wait, is this where Elliot lives? Yeah, he lives. Oh. Yes. I want I told to you, go he's to like there. The, he's like the poetry. Writer. He locked me out. <laughs> That's why. Oh, Elliot. look, but if you fix his bridge, see how the bridge is broken? I think you get points with him if you fix that bridge. Oh, 300 pieces of wood. That's a lot. That's a lot, Four. Rachel. That's well, lot. is it a lot to ask for love, Ashley? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I just picked up something. Okay. So let's talk about something else since we only have 15 minutes. Yes. Um, I want to talk about what you've been doing. And um, you wrote a chapter for me recently that's going yeah. to be published this year. And I think we should talk yeah. about it. Cool. So, oh, I'll, I guess I'll open. There's a book. <laughs> There's a book called <laughs> The Video Game Debate, which I published several years ago now. Um, and The Video Game Debate is a series of essays written by experts in the, of each particular field. I talked about the state of the research relating to media effects. So there's a chapter on aggression, there's a chapter on addiction, um, there's, you know, social outcomes, all of kind of the main debates about video games. We are publishing a follow-up book called The Video Game Debate 2 that tackles new topics that weren't um, discussed in the first one. So things like virtual reality, we're talking about gamification, and we're talking about streaming and Twitch and the lovely Ashley Brown. <laughs> authored that chapter um, with one of your with one of your students. Yeah. Yeah, one of my super talented students who convinced me to stream, actually. Um, so we, we decided to talk about uh, I think I think I was reticent to start Twitch streaming, not only because um, sometimes people are afraid of harassment and stuff like that, but also because of I just didn't really see the point. Like why is it fun to watch someone play video games? And um, I, I I tried it out and it was actually, the, the student had a, a good phrase. Um, she said, I, I started streaming when I first moved uh, states and I had no friends and I felt very, very lonely and isolated. So starting when I started streaming, I felt very connected to other people. And uh, that kind of resonated with me and I thought, oh geez, that's true, I guess. So when I started streaming, I started building up a community of people who were interested in what I was doing, but also interested in just talking and hanging out and getting to know me, um, which definitely helps with feelings of loneliness and isolation, which I think a lot of people might be feeling right now. Um, so streaming is, has been super helpful in that regard. And I wanted to write a chapter about that to talk about, um, I suppose, for people who just don't get it or why, who kind of entered it with the same ideas I had of like, why, who cares? Like, why are you watching, why don't you just play your own video games? Um, because it's not about that, right? It's about connecting to a community. And one of the most supportive communities I found is Twitch Kittens. And I, um, there's like an Instagram ring and we comment on each other's stuff and they do cute cosplay and it's like a really inclusive community. So all genders are welcome and um, people are just super supportive and positive. And it actually kind of reminds me of, I'm totally lost, <laughs> of uh, my belly dance community, oddly enough. Um, so my dance sisters are a huge support and socialization for me. In fact, because of the pandemic and because of shortages of various stuff, uh, they've opened up a, a type of pantry at the dance studio. And Aww. we have like a little, yeah, it's very sweet. And we have a little like network, text network, like, hey, I'm at this shop. Do you want me to look for anything for you? And I can swing it by and leave it on your porch. And so that kind of supportive community is fantastic. And in situations like this where we can't dance together, I think, um, We've been doing a lot of like Facebook Live <laughs> stuff, but also uh, connecting through games and through Twitch is super helpful too. Yeah, for sure. Building for those sure. virtual networks. As and Twitch wanna. too, you know, through this series of isolation, these weeks of isolation, uh, my kids have been watching a lot of Twitch streams because they have a lot of like kid friendly ones where they'll do like drawing classes or like dance classes or like all of this stuff. It's pretty incredible how technology has come to meet the challenges that we now have. Oh, have for to. sure. For sure. For sure. I have yeah. so many weeds here that I can't see. Oh crap. I don't but even know where you are. Time. Are you even on your farm? I, I think I'm close. Wait. No. Yeah, you are to the right. That's your, that's your extra farm. Oh my God. Okay. Um, do you, you Twitch stream as well? I not. Oh. I'm on, I, I guest appear on Twitch streams. Uh, I don't know. 
Why not? Um, I don't know. It's, it's a time commitment. It's a huge <laughs> time commitment. It's yeah. also a lot of tech. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, I do have built-in IT. Um, yeah. My husband is my built-in IT. Um, but yeah, I, it's just really a, a time. I have two children. They're five and two. I know you know this, but the people watching don't. Uh, and that takes up a lot of my time. Oh, for now. sure. For now. For fun. sure. Are you trying to homeschool or are you just like, well... <laughs> Um, I mean, I am trying. Um, I'm trying. It's not the same as I'm going to school, obviously. But we do. It's, my children are learning French. I don't speak any French, so that's interesting. Um, and I'm trying to do like, a little bit here and there. It's actually funny because her, my my kids' teachers um, are producing a lot of content. And oh, they're cool. producing YouTube videos. And so their French lessons are at preschool level. And they're YouTube videos, so I am super psyched that I get French lessons every day. Talk about looking at the positive, like kindergarten level French lessons, which is exactly oh, how I did it. C'est bon. Je m'appelle Rachel. <laughs> Great. That's all the French yeah. I know, sorry. That's, <laughs> Un bir yeah, that's, all that's, <laughs> that's all I got. But, Spanish yeah. and Swedish, I can do. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky because my kids are five and two. So, I mean, if I didn't teach them anything from now until September, honestly, it wouldn't matter because school is mostly play-based. I feel really for the parents with older children because that's significant. Like, yeah. if you actually need to be teaching them content. Like, like seniors in high school, I don't even know what's happening. Um, like yeah, especially if they're if they're um, going to, like with the whole graduation stuff being up in the air. Yeah, I think um, for people that don't do well with change, that like to have everything super planned out, I think that this has been yeah. an extremely difficult few months, and it's going to be a difficult summer. Um, yeah. I think I think one of the benefits, so it, you know, as you know, and Twitch knows, I'm a professor um, at the University of Utah. And my department, I have to not to not to totally blow our own horns here, but pat on the back a little bit because we were like, okay, let's do this. Let's figure it out. Let's figure out ways to get equipment to the people that need it. Let's figure out ways to um, yeah. tell a network. Let's figure out all this stuff out. And it's just let's just treat it like any other challenge, right? Like as, game developers are kind of used to the engine breaking, to your build breaking, yeah. to the lighting not baking right. Like we, this is this is just another day on on the job for us, right? Yeah. So I had to just overhaul. I had two days to overhaul my entire lesson plan. Right. Um, and it's been a whirlwind, but one of the yeah. things it has taught me and maybe taught my students as well is that you can do your best. You can plan all you can, but but when it, you, you have reasonable expectations, right? So the, right. there's been a running joke. Like students are like, can I have an extension? I'm like, sure. And someone else is like, can I have an extension? I'm like, yep. And they're like, what about me? I'm like, you get an extension and you get an extension and you get an extension. Because <laughs> right. who's going to be a hard ass right now? What's the point, right? We're just, well, that, yeah. let's just cling to each other like wreckage in a store. <laughs> and get yeah, exactly. This. Exactly. I mean, and that's, that's what else are you going to do? So in the, in the last few minutes, and I do want you to continue, I just want to explain why I opened up Animal Crossing. I have yeah. no idea why this villager is giving me crap. But you asked about my villagers, so I want to give you a quick tour of my yes. Animal Crossing village. There's Bubbles. Bubbles seems delightful. First of all, they, they just bubbles. gave you a present. He just bubbles. gave you a present. I hate bubbles. Um, this is the hippo that I like. Biff. Biff? Yeah. What's not to like about a pink hippo named Biff? Right? He looks... He's got some angry eyebrows, but... Um, so Biff is a jock, and I just got a protein shake. <laughs> also, hilarious. Biff gave me a lantern earlier, and I'm real tempted to give it back to him, so I'm going to do that <laughs> and see what he says. Uh, what were you going to say? Oh, yeah, it looks super familiar, but now my iceps are playing tricks on me. <laughs> he knows I regifted his own gift. That's funny. Uh, so I was going to say about... I don't know what... I, I think I was going to say about um, adjusting... So, like older kids, like I said, it's harder for older kids, but my daughter, she does a calendar page every day, and you have to put the date in the month, and you're, there's like all these images of faces with different emotions, and you have to pick the one that you feel, and she oh. picks the angry face every morning. And she told me today, she's like, I'm picking this picture every day until we go back to school, and I was like, oh, it's going to be a while. 
crap. Okay. Like, she is so mad. And I understand. Like, she, where are her friends? Where's her school? Like, you know, she's stuck with me. All she's really angry. I'm so, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit happy that she's reacting with pure unadulterated rage instead of, like, right. making sadness. <laughs> like, she, <laughs> yeah. Like, she doesn't, like, act angry, like, stomping around every day, but every day, like, the last two weeks, she has picked the same angry face every day. <laughs> I know. Like, I feel for. Okay, so this is the area where I put the villagers I don't like. So I got two less than ideal villagers, and you I tried to move them, and you put them around like barbed wire so they can't leave their house. No, these are what? the ones that OG came with the island. So and you fenced them in. <laughs> yeah. You can like do they get out of the fence? Um, there's a fly, so it's cool that there's flies. And, and one of them gave me this telephone pole, so I was like, all right, well, you get that. And then I crafted some trash bags for them. You are hilarious. Um, also, my teaching assistant made me this cool hat uh, it, because I feel like it's really weird when you're the only human on the island, so I want to look like an animal. That's so really cute. Sheep. Um, so that's where the naughty villagers go. The villagers I like get really nice property. <laughs> I'm so horrible. I know. Um, so my favorite villager, who's probably out doing cool stuff, uh, like killing people, he lives here in the big black house. His name's Rodeo, um, a.k.a. Lucifer. He wears a black robe with red on it and has red glowing eyes. And, like, most of the cows in the game have, like, the bull horns like that, and his just tur curved downward. He looks really evil. Um, so there's him, and then there's a pink alligator with hearts all over her face named oh, Gail that I really nice. like. I really like Gail. She's really cute. Uh, this is one of the, the bad neighbors, Sherry. She's so annoying. But can't you, you can make them move out. Did you, okay, two thoughts. One, you can make them move out if you really hate them, but two, there is a clown neighbor. Have you seen this? Please no. Do not want. I'm going to show you right now. Please to not have, though. Clown. Oh, Emperor Butterfly. Like, the clown is clearly the worst possible. Look at this nightmare. Ugh! I need yeah. it, though, a little bit. If, if you had that living in your uh, village, that yeah, that's the worst. No, I'm going to have to figure out how to get that clown. Um, oh, God, he's the worst. I think he's a sheep. Technically. So yeah. this is my nice little farming flower area. So, oh, that's that. really pretty. Yeah, and then this is where... Um, Brad Pitt lives. <laughs> What's it? The first, the first uh, camper villager I got is like, Bongiorno. <laughs> I was like, oh no, you have to live here. This is your oh, home now. No. It's an aardvark named Olaf. And he uh, mixes oh my his gosh. languages a lot. Does he? Yeah, so he'll be like, buenos dias. So. But not in a good way. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of fun. Did you ever watch uh, that TV show Legion? No. Is it good? Uh, it is good, but the villain, um, the guy, well, one of the villains or whatever, uh, he switches languages based on, like, his mood. Like, I guess the actor himself speaks multiple languages. It's really cool. Like, he'll speak French when he's flirting, or he'll speak, <laughs> or, like, he speaks a bunch of languages. Really cool. I'm dying to like see your village as well. But uh, yeah, as, we, <laughs> as we wrap it up, uh, final... Final thoughts. When? How? How are we? Are we going to pull through this? We are. Um, I think it's getting worse before it's getting better, and that's terrible. Um, I think we need to use our support systems, ask for help when we need it, understand that it is bad, and it's bad for everyone. And you are not alone, and you're never alone. And if you are looking for resources, whether it's to find a mental health practitioner or to find a community or just to find information on mental health issues, you can always go to takethis.org. We have full of resources and um, yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being on the stream. We're definitely Thanks in this together. Me. Yeah. Um, you know, hit me up if you if you want some coconuts or I've got pretty much a full orchard. So I've all the I know, I'm gonna come uh, I'm gonna come steal your villagers. Do, do you know do that too? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, I do. We'll because find you a clown. That's how, yes, please give me a clown. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for watching. Let's find someone yeah. to do a raid with real quick. Uh, I, who's who's streaming right now? Let's see. 
Oh, Gamma Rays is streaming. Okay, let's go raid Gamma Rays channel. Let's do that right now. Do you, uh, do you, you, you don't Twitch though, but have you ever done a raid, Rachel? Uh, yes. Nice. Okay. Boop. There we go. And do it. I will be back streaming. I don't have any streams coming up, but let's let's whatever. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Maybe I'll be back Thanks on Sunday with uh, with Mike. That's what I'll do. I'll play Elder Scrolls Online with Mike again. Okay. Bye everyone. Okay. Choo choo choo. I love reading students. It's so fun. Yeah. Thank you.